calling contract. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can make use of functions that exist on other smart contracts on the same network. And why is this even useful? Now let's look at a scenario in our use case why this will be useful. So we've got this pizza place contract, which is governed by an interface. So we know that all franchises will look kind of like this with a place order and a deliver function. However, as the big company, maybe we want to set a global pizza price and have all the other franchises pull that price and nothing else because we want to be able to change it at one place and have all the other franchises change the same. This would mean that here in our function with the place order, here we will not be determining a hard coded value of one ether. Instead, we'll get this information from a contract that we are going to use that's already been deployed before this contract. Okay, now in order to create that contract, let's create a new file. Here on contracts, right click, say new file, and we will call this global pizza cost dot solve. Now, like we've seen before, we create a contract by writing the contract keyword, the name of the contract, in our case, global pizza cost. And then we will need our license as well as the pragma line, which I'm just simply going to copy and paste in here. And we are ready to go. The global pizza cost contract will have a new variable and that will be a uint and it will be cost. Now the cost I'm going to assign, and of course you can do this through a constructor or other functions and Maybe it's a smart idea to do so, to kind of set those functions to update the cost. But for my use case, I'm going to make this maybe 0.1 uh, Ether for a pizza globally. And remember, this is a way amount. So technically, we could have specified the way amount of 0.1 uh, Ether using conversion. Uh, but to make it easy and uh, using this ether keyword, we can do it like this. Normally, we won't use decimals anywhere else, but this is fine with the ether keyword. Now, the other thing that we could have done is made this public. And that way, we could just simply read the value. But I don't want to do that because I want to show you how you can call smart contract functions from another contract. So we're going to create a function, and this will be a function called get cost. And this will be a public function and it will return to us a uint, which will be this value. So we could technically just go here and say return the cost. And now we can also make this a view like so. And now we have a getter function for our cost. Now, I also want to implement some kind of setter function. Now, this will be public, so anyone will be able to do this. Uh, or set the price. Remember, we don't have a owner functionality and we can implement this. It's much like the one that we've implemented before. But to keep this simple, I'm not going to do that. So we will say that we could accept a new cost in here. And the only thing that we would like to do is set the cost variable to our new cost variable. And this will not return uh, anything. And this will also not be view right? So this is how we can set the cost. Now let's just make this cost public. And this is just so that we could test what this value is after we set it. And we will be getting the value from our other contract. Now firstly, let's go ahead and deploy this contract, we're going to go to the deploy section. And here's the global pizza cost, we're going to deploy it, uh, we can open it up and here we can see the cost is this much in way, right? 0 0.1 uh, Ether. Now, this is perfectly fine. And now let's jump back to the franchise pizza and see how we can implement uh, and use this contract that's now deployed on the network to get this cost when we call this get cost method. Just understand that the next step can be implemented in many different ways. For example, you can create a global uh, version of this extra contract and then use it, set it in your constructor and then use it in the contract. Or you can implement it directly where it is used. And this is what I like doing. So I'm going to show you how to do this part. Now this part might seem a bit confusing because at this point, our contract doesn't know anything about this contract. However, 
we do know that this contract has an address. Here it is, and we can copy it over there. This is the identifier for this contract on the blockchain, and we will use that shortly. But the first thing that we actually need is the blueprint, the reference to this contract that we want to create based off the address. So what we'll need to do is import. So we're going to say import and then specify that it's going to be the global.sol, which is actually living here next to our pizza contract. It's important to understand that by importing this contract over here doesn't simply mean that this will get deployed with our pizza place. Um, we are simply using the shell of this contract. We are using the blueprint to reconstruct it and base it on a contract that's already been deployed, this one. And you'll see what I mean, but just know that this we are using as the blueprint. Now you might ask, Daniel, how do we then use um, or actually uh, do this method with contracts outside of our organization, things like a different NFT contract. Well, you can do the same thing by using the standards. By using an ERC-721 standard for an NFT collection, you know that that function or that contract facilitates those functions and you can do it the same way. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can now recreate the global pizza cost contract um, here in our function and then call the cost method. So right here at the top, what we're going to do is create a new variable. Now this variable is actually going to be of type global pizza cost. And we are going to give it the name, maybe global pizza cost with a lowercase g. And then this will be equal to a new global pizza cost. And we need to specify the address now in here of the existing one on the network. This means that we can go to our deployed contract and copy its address and simply paste it here in the contract. Now this will construct this global pizza cost exactly to the one that's been deployed and now we can use this variable over here to call the functions. So Instead of saying that the message.value should be less than one ether, or if it is less, then we're going to revert, remember? We're going to say that if the global pizza cost, this variable, dot get cost, and we're going to simply call it like that, and this would mean that we are going to get the global cost that was specified in our contract over here. And now all the franchises will be using the global cost to kind of make this check if the person is going to pay enough for their pizza. And this is very cool because if we change the cost, then this will be updated dynamically. Now, this implementation will work, but there is some risk. Let's say that there's a different contract that was deployed of the global pizza cost. They will need to be able to update this. Now, we can implement a function that kind of does this dynamically for us, but this is the gist of how we can call functions in other contracts. To test it all out, I'm going to deploy my new contract, which is the pizza place. I'm going to deploy it, and here it is. Now, let's try and place an order. If we do so, it will fail because we haven't given it any way. Now, I'm going to just simply use the exact weigh amount that we need, which is 0, uh, 0,1 ether, which is this amount of weigh. And this is a nice converter, which you can use. And now I'm going to specify the weigh amount, like so, and place my order, and it works. Now, what will happen if we set the cost to a bit higher? So let's go and set the cost to maybe 0.2. I'm going to do this and say set cost to this new weigh amount. And then when we go and place our order for the existing 0.1 again, it should fail because we are not providing enough weigh. So place order and it fails. And here we can see that it reverted because there wasn't enough funds. Payment not enough for pizza. 
However, if we go and just increase it to the correct amount now for our pizza, and we specified here at the top again, place the order, it works. And again, that's just because we've updated our global pizza value or the cost uh, per pizza. All right, and that's as simple as it is for calling other smart contracts from your smart contract. As long as you have the blueprint um, or the interface, you can recreate that contract based on the existing address of the contract on that existing chain.